So hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Artificial Intelligence for Everyone. In this episode, we're going to go beyond the perception and talk about multi-layer perceptrons, and that is how you can stack multiple neurons in one layer and have multiple layers on each other in order to have better predictive power. So let's get going straight away. We're going to start with the formal description straight away. Then we're going to look at some images and visualizations in order to explain the formal description in an easier way, so it's easier to understand. So the formal description goes, a multilayer perceptron, MLP, is a feed-forward artificial neural network model that maps a set of input data onto a set of appropriate outputs. A MLP consists of multiple layers of node in a directed graph, with each layer fully connected to the next one. So. Let's look at this straight away. I'm going to record my screen here, so it's, uh, I'm going to pop it up. So you won't see me for much longer, but you see my screen instead. So I found this really good blog post on elogel.wordpress.com that shows uh, how a typical structure can look like. So here you see we have our input layer with our data, as always. They have multiple inputs here. We had x1 and x2 in the last video. But that's just how many inputs you're sending to your network. And then you can see he has two hidden layers, and that is two intermediary layers to the output layer. So when we looked at the perceptron, we only had two inputs and then one output signal. Uh, the perceptron was the only neuron there. But here we can see we have multiple inputs and we have three output nodes. So in this case, we're able to output three signals here uh, that we can use for, for different tasks. So Say, for example, I'm just going to make something up here that you give me, we get two inputs, the size of my hand and my height, and we want to output how much I take in squats, deadlift, and bench press, just for example. So that could be a typical problem here that we could use, have do with this kind of setup. But what we are doing here is that we have two hidden layers in between. And why do we have that? Well, in math, it's because if we have multiple hidden layers with act activation functions, so we haven't talked about activation functions before, but I'll explain them briefly. But if we have multiple hidden layers with nonlinear activation functions, we're able to do nonlinear predictions or on, uh, in, in using this kind of network. So remember in the last video when we talked about the perceptron that we had our input and it was multiplied with some kind of weight, and it was given to the uh, neuron, the perceptron in that case here. Yeah, and then we summarize that for all of the inputs and all of the weights. So every neuron would get the input times the weight for every neuron. What the neuron then does is that it uses an activation function to output something. So it takes this uh, input that they have, the weights times the input, it summarizes all of the inputs, um, and then it will take that value and use it with uh, some kind of activation function. And a very common activation functions to use is uh, the hyperbolic uh, tangent. And this doesn't maybe say so much to you if you don't have a background in math, but it's basically to have a nonlinear activation function in order to do better predictions. So when we have these many hidden layers, we also, uh, when different kind of noise, we also have some other features uh, in our network that I'm going to show you here using the neural network playgrounds that I find very useful. So remember in the last video where we had the perceptron and we had the, uh, the graph with two different uh, set groups of uh, classifications. In, so we had some dots up here, there was one class, and some dots down here, there was one class. Well, now we have the very same thing. And as you can see here, we're going to start with just the same as we had in the perceptron. We had two inputs and we had one neuron that gave us an output. And I stated that it was perfectly possible for that network to learn how to classify between these two uh, groups because it can just draw one line in between as a linear classifier. Now we're going to run this visualization so you can see that it actually worked in real time. So if I run this, you can see that it learns. And then it's able to distinguish a line here and make uh, a, a linear separation between the two different groups. But we also have the problem, if the data isn't separable with one line, 
what do we do then? Well, let's try now and see what this network will do that only is able to do one line uh, when it get this kind of data where it, it's not able to do any linear separation. So if we run this, we can see that our networks try to do something, but it doesn't really learn anything. It doesn't really work. It's, it's still very wrong. So we can solve this by adding hidden layers. So if we have a hidden layer in between, we're able to do non-linear uh, combinations in this. So as, as, once again, if you don't have a background in math, maybe that doesn't say very much to you. But when we run the visualization, I'll make sure to explain it for you because it's much easier to see it uh, actually visualized. So if we run this once again, we can see that it does something, but we can also see that it's not a straight line here any longer, right? It, it's moving. It's not bound to one straight line. It can actually do more things. So I'm not going to say much about this any longer, but when we add one more neuron here, how do you expect that the... Uh, uh, the classification here will look because we know when we had one hidden unit here, then it was a straight line. Now we have two hidden unit here. Now we can see that it's it's not a straight line any longer. It's something else. What is that? What do you think? How many lines can you make this kind of uh, separation with? So now when I add one, another third neuron, I want you to pause this for a second and think. What do you think it will look like now? What will it be able to do more than one line? more than two lines. Just think for a second and then come back and now let's run this. So now we run it with three and it's able to do some kind of things here, right? It's starting to be able to kind of predict it quite good what's happening. You can see it's very unstable, but it's still quite able to uh, make some kind of separation between the blue dots and the orange dots in a correct way here. So if we add a fourth neuron, what do you think will happen now? See, now it's fully able to do some kind of prediction. And maybe that was what we thought it would do in this very case as well, because it actually needed four lines to do a complete separation here between the four different regions in this. So just looking at this kind of visualizations, I think you'll get some kind of intuition on how this works and how the hidden layer actually helps to do more uh, harder predictions and understanding more complex data. It's a, it's a higher predictive power. So let's do it with some other one as well. So for example, we have the one here that looks a bit different. It has the blue one in the middle and the orange one outside. And we want to be able to, uh, given a random dot, we want to tell if uh, it's blue or orange. And this is a bit hard, it's a bit tricky, it's not... The last uh, visualization we looked at, it's a bit easier for straight lines to kind of figure out, right? This is a bit harder because it's a circle. So let's run this with two hidden, uh, two neurons in the hidden layer here and see how that works. You can see that it you can basically see here that it's doing two lines. And if you hover over these as well, we can see that it's actually what's happening as well, because we can see which regions these line actually result to. But it doesn't really do very well right now. If we add another one, we can see that it's starting to do something a bit better, maybe. Still not very good, because all of these orange dots are being misclassified. So if I add a bunch of hidden neurons, what do you think will happen then? See, so here we can see that it's actually starting to be able to have enough straight lines in order to figure out the circle in the middle. And that's kind of the power between the hidden layers as well, because we can just add much more complexity to it straight away. So you stack these on top of each other with the multiple hidden layers. We can have a lot more layers here as well. And these all do non-linear combinations of our inputs. And still, as I said earlier as well, if you don't know what a linear combination is, don't worry. Being simply said, you can say if you add more hidden layers and you add more neurons to each layer, you have a higher predictive power. 
but also as I don't we did mention it in the earlier videos and I will mention it in videos later on as well the more you adapt your network to your training data as well it, the more specialized it gets to only recognize the training data so it's an e even line there a fine line between being uh, too adapted to the training data and being able to generalize on new points that we've never seen before if you're really specialized to the training data only. So this is really cool, but how do we actually learn how this works? Because we can see every time it runs, every epoch, you can see we ran 500 epochs here, it, it learned something. And I talked about in the last video how we know our desired output and we know the output that our network uh, output it and we can see if we have to adjust the line to the left or to the right well we can do kind of the same thing here but we gotta use some tricks in order to do it in a decent way because we have so many hidden layers so the commonly used algorithm uh, is called backpropagation and you use something called gradient descent or stochastic gradient descent and basically all it does is minimizing some kind of loss function where the loss function determines how wrong you were from what you were supposed to have as an output. So it really just compares what you gave and what you were supposed to have and how wrong you were. But being uh, putting out how this works simply, the backpropagation algorithm going into no math. So we have our input, x1 and x2 here, if we look at the visualization again, x1 and x2. And we know what output we were supposed to have. We compare what our network said to what we were supposed to have, and we see if it was right or if it was wrong. If it was wrong, we have to either make our line more to that or more to that, you know, adjust the line a bit to the right or a bit to the left. So basically we look here, how wrong were we? And then we propagate the error backwards, 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 which for each hidden layer in our network. And we use something called the gradients that we which basically is the derivative, if you've done some calculus, derivative with multiple variables for each layer. And every time we do that, the weights for every hidden layer gets adjusted. So when we only had no hidden layers, but just the input and the perceptron, we have had one set of weight, weight matrix, you know, what we multiply our input with our weights with before it was summarized in the neuron. Well, now when we have multiple hidden layers, we have a separate weight matrix for every hidden layer. So using the backpropagation algorithm, we adjust the weights a bit in every layer all the time. But as the layers in the beginning uh, depend on the layers in the back, in the front, in order to be able to adjust, we have to propagate that error throughout the network all the way back. So I hope that you found this tool uh, as a good visualization to see how you can use some kind of uh, descriptive power here uh, with the multi-layer perceptron and how it's more powerful than the single perceptron because now we can stack these uh, many in one hidden layer, multiple hidden layers and do some really cool stuff. So that's uh, yeah, just a brief explanation how feed for all neural networks works. We're feed forward, I forgot to say that. It's just that we send the data forward all the time through our hidden layers. So I hope you got this, uh, you under, got a better understanding now because that's what I'm aiming for. I'm doing this channel and releasing these videos in order to teach you uh, these concepts in a simple way so you can get some kind of intuitive understanding about how artificial intelligence works. So if you have any questions or you have any feedback to me on how I can improve my teaching, or you have any subject that you really want me to talk about that you've been wondering on uh, for a long time, drop that comment down below and I'll make sure to answer it as soon as possible and hopefully I can help you out with the subjects you want me to talk about. So if you like this, just hit the subscribe button so you stay, stay tuned for the upcoming videos as well so you don't miss out on anything here. And as always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll talk to you soon again.